All right, on this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, it is from our Kansas trip and it is with Ty Easley of the Heartland Bow Hunter. You get to check out all of his deer, hear the stories, and believe it or not, the biggest deer he ever shot was from the first season of Heartland Bow Hunter. So let's get right into it. Here we go. Hey guys, come on in. I'm Ty Easley with Heartland Bow Hunter. I'm gonna show you around. a uh, little bit of a few sheds that I've found over the years, kind of a few of my nicer ones, but uh, this is kind of a little little entryway down into my main cave down here. Well, it's kind of funny, I, this room was just full of deer heads. I mean, there's still a lot of deer heads in there, but I had to move uh, four of them upstairs. We just finished some, uh, our, redone our living room with all the flooring and everything, so I've moved four of my biggest ones upstairs. But uh, this is kind of just, my little chill area and where I keep a lot of my sheds and, and all the rest of the deer heads. But I'm, I'm actually part of, affiliated with Heartland Bow Hunter and have been since, gosh, I think it was 2005. So yeah, it's been forever ago, it seems like. The first deer I actually ever killed on the very first uh, gear of Heartland Bow Hunter was that double drop time buck. Uh, his nickname was Total Package was his name. Uh, actually a four-year-old at the time, but he was he was a good one. I tried to kind of graduated from there and, and try to let him get to five or six now, but it doesn't always doesn't always happen like that. But but uh, the very I kind of got started in deer hunting like probably everybody else does. I my dad was into archery hunting and and, and uh, you know gun hunting and for whitetails and I actually started team bow hunting when I was 13 and my very first ever bow kill was this one here in Missouri and it was kind of a tough way to start really I mean it was it was a giant deer and at the time it was almost more than what I could really appreciate I didn't realize how big a deer it really was and it actually took me 20 years till I killed a total package before I finally killed a bigger gross scoring deer than this one but but it was really cool I'll have to show you a picture over there uh, later of, of me when I was a little tiny tiny tot but these are just some of the other bucks that I've killed in Missouri. And it's crazy because I think about every one of the deer that I show you, except for maybe two of them, were all uh, within probably 30 minutes or so of the Kansas City area, you know, right around this area. This one was one exception, which was up northern Missouri, kind of north central Missouri. And then I have one out in Kansas, a big, uh, big deer that I killed out in Kansas, uh, quite a bit. It's actually the biggest deer I've ever killed to this day. So. But yeah, just pretty cool. Uh, as you can tell, I love to shed hunt. That's kind of my thing anymore. I, I like a lot of people. You know, you get into deer hunting and you just go to hunt and kind of shoot the first thing you see as you get. And then as you get along, you start killing bigger deer. And and now it's all kind of learning the deer and kind of you know focusing in on one deer. That's what I really like to do. But I really love to shed hunt. And this is. This is probably one of my favorite set of sheds that I've ever found. It was a triple, actually kind of four drops really. I actually filmed this deer when he was a four year old and he had a single drop and then he went to this at five. And then the next year was weird. He actually went back to a single drop, but these were the only set of sheds that I found uh, to him. But kind of a crazy story, my dad was with me. Well, when I first found his one, the, the right side, I was with my lab and she saw it. My old, I've got a different lab now, but a little a black lab I used to have. She, she saw it like right as I saw it, she picked it up and brought it to me, which was, you know, I, I was, that was the sheds I was looking for. So I was completely ecstatic. And uh, we looked forever for the other side. I came back the next day, looked forever for the other side. Dad came with me. And finally, the third time out, we start doing a circle right where we found them, or right where we found them. The farmer had went in and dropped a brush pile right in there and actually had dropped the brush pile on top of the other shed. And my dad just happened to walk by the brush pile and look down in it and found it. So it was just total random luck, but it was cool to finally find the other side. So, but I, I love 
as you can see, shed hunting probably almost as much as I love to deer hunt. And I love working with shed dogs. I just got a new one uh, and uh, named her Faith. And she's on her second year now. Actually started getting into, this is, these sheds are probably one of my favorite sets besides that one. This is uh, the same buck. I actually have four years of this deer. Uh, this was the first side I ever found to him was a three point side back in 18. And this deer is actually still alive. Um, and I was like, wow, this is the biggest three point shed I'll ever find. And little did I know the next year I didn't find a shed. And then the year before last, my daughter and I were out and she found, picked up one side to him. And then I picked up the other side to him, probably 400 yards away, just got lucky. And then while we were in that field, when I picked that one up, she was glassing across the field and saw one from the year before. And then this year, I went and looked everywhere for him for, gosh, quite a few times. And then the last time I went over that area and that field, I ended up finding them. But, I mean, they're just giant. I mean, he, he actually turned into an eight-pointer. Well, if you include the sticker point, a nine-pointer. But, I mean, just a giant heavy and just the weight of these sheds, just unreal. But... I was pretty excited, and it was one of my lab's first finds, too, so, yeah, we were, I, I was pretty ecstatic, it's crazy, you can get that excited just when you find a shed, but when you've been looking for them for that long, it, uh, you know, it gets you pretty pumped up, but as you can see, I've found a couple sheds over the years, and these are a lot of the ones, I actually, my wife has a store in downtown Oak Grove, so a lot of the sheds that don't really mean anything, or that are old use I kind of cut up and we you know kind of sell them as chew toys up there so but yeah that buck actually is my daughter's first buck so that one always holds a special spot uh this was she killed it about five years five or six years ago but it was pretty cool deer she hunted pretty hard for that I think she was right around I think she was right around 13 or 14 as well uh so it might have even been longer than that right around there that's hard to, she's 21 now, so I was trying to do the math in my head, but uh, anyways, that was pretty cool, and she's killed one since then, and, and then these last four or five years, she's just been on a, just a downward slide for some reason. <laughs> she's had some close calls and close opportunities, but she's got one deer that she, we've been going after for quite a while. It's actually one of the sheds, or actually it's over there, one of the sheds, but, but yeah. But yeah, we'll go over here and look at a few of these others. These are some turkeys that killed over the years. This is actually a big uh, four bearded gobbler that I killed with my dad uh, quite a few years ago. And then uh, this was one my son skipped school on and killed his first big old tom and it was actually a four bearded tom as well. So we had to get both of those mounted. And, and a few of these sheds are the deer that are upstairs, but I got permission to bring the deer upstairs, but I couldn't bring all the accessories with them unfortunately. <laughs> No, my wife's pretty cool about that. I can't complain for sure. But this is uh, just kind of a, you know, all my neater or you know, should I say neater cooler sheds that I found. Some really cool with just heavy mass. Uh, that, like I said, you know, most of these are found locally around here. Just not of them all. Not all of them are, you know, giant sheds. But I just like finding, you know, really unique, you know, sheds like this. I'd rather find one like that than a, you know, a an average 140 inch, you know, eight pointer, honestly. And a few bucks, this was actually Holyfield, the buck I killed on on, uh, on Heartland Bow Hunter last year. Oh, but that was him. I did a Euro mount on him and then got a few of his sheds down here. And then a few of them are the ones that got away. This this is another one. I, I was gonna say earlier that those, that six pointer, those are actually sheds that I that you know that I found but I've never found that's the most sheds I've ever found off of one buck that was six this one's I've got a couple of them that I've found five to and this one is that one which my daughter and I almost had him killed but it just didn't work out I don't think we that footage has never been aired either Mike might throw a teaser give that a teaser you know for the show hopefully but uh it was right over the shoulder and it's when I learned that my daughter was left eye dominant in the heat of the moment when all the wind was blowing in her eyes and she was blinking and her left eye took over and was looking at her sights and she missed the deer by like two foot and she's like an amazing shot I mean I wouldn't shoot against her at 20 yards so I was like okay something major happened 
And then later that year, we started shooting, and we ended up figuring out what it was, and it all made sense. But So now she's very apparent of it. But, yeah, just a cool buck. Um, never did kill that deer. He ended up disappearing the next year. That was pretty unfortunate. But this deer here is Dreamer, which we'll be going upstairs and seeing in a little while. This was uh, the sheds I had to him. Uh, he was right at about 170 here, or pretty close to it, if he wouldn't have broke that brow tine. And then when I ended up killing him last year, he was 182. And he'll actually air uh, next episode, next week on on the Outdoor Channel on Heartland Bowhunter. And then this was just a shed I found to him the year before, but very cool buck. I always had a feeling he was going to be something special, and he, he did. If they can just get to, you know, that five, six years old, especially six years old, they really get that mass. And usually, what I've found, they usually grow their biggest set that year, but it doesn't hold true for all of them. So, but yeah, just some cool different sheds here. This is some dead, these are actually three dead heads that I found. Um, and a couple of them I found on park property too. Um, but I always, I know all our local conservation agents, so I get all the, the tags for them, the carcass tags. And, but, uh, yeah, this is the only 200 inch deer that I've ever really seen or found, you know, around here. I actually found him dead and I had found one of his sheds the year before. Um, but yeah, he's a giant, really cool, just palmated almost like flames coming off really cool buck but yeah some some definitely good ones and this is a little bit back where it all started you know i shot some younger deer uh back in after i killed that big one the first year i you know didn't know how much i was going to get into it at that time or i probably would have just did european mounts on these deer but it's crazy you can still look at them and i remember all the story you know just like you're right there in the tree so uh, this was, I did like, this was a Kansas buck too. And this was the first set of sheds that my black, my my first lab ever found. I oh, know I did have the very first shed I ever found too. <laughs> this was, this is kind of, I, 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 I got spoiled. Like this is the first shed I ever found, which is a big shed. And the first deer I ever killed with a bow, I kind of got spoiled. So it just naturally kind of got hooked into it. And I don't know, I, I love it. If you guys want to, we'll head upstairs and check out the rest of them. So I gotta admit, I love having these deer upstairs because I catch myself sitting here watching TV and just kind of glancing up and reliving those moments, which I, I, I you know, that's the reason I got the deer mounted. I, I, you know, pay a little respect to the animal and then also to, to relive those memories. And, and uh, but these are probably my four, Maybe not biggest gross scoring deer, but definitely the two on the right are. That one on the right was the one I killed uh, this year, Dream or last year, Dreamer. Uh, that's the one that was going to be on the episode I was just telling you in the sheds I held up to him. But uh, not a big frame deer, but just a lot of mass and really threw on a lot of points this last year when I, you know, right before I killed him. But uh, very cool deer to hunt. Uh, one thing I love about, you know, as mentioned downstairs, that I love hunting. A certain deer but even more I love like learning about each certain deer because they really are they have similar characteristics but every deer is different I mean every that's what I've noticed one thing is you got to kind of hunt them all different uh, the areas they tend to like you know and just you know running multiple cameras a lot of scouting and really trying to figure out each and every deer's individual characteristics what I love but uh, the one on the left there is hijack that was a buck that i was after for quite a few years and had a couple close calls with before i ever killed him and then the one up in the middle there that's the biggest one i ever killed and i actually killed that one out in kansas that's actually the first time i ever went on a kind of an outfitted hunt uh it's through um heartland pride outfitters but they're really cool with us. We've we've always kind of had that agreement when we go out, we can kind of do our own hunts and go hang our own stands. And so they just, you know, when we get there, they give us some invaluable intel on like the latest cameras that they got set up, what deer in the area, and then kind of let us go on the farm so we can go hang, hang and hunt, which is what we love to do. So, but uh, yeah, that one was the first one. I think I killed him on the third day out there and that was just, everybody when we were looking at trail cam pictures, he looked like he was, 
probably about a one mid 160s deer and uh yeah talk about a deer that grew when i walked up on it i was beside myself it was just he looked and even coming in he looked big but his body was so big he just it kind of dwarfed his rack a little bit and I, I just when we walked up on him when he was laying there dead i was just like oh my gosh this is the biggest thing i've ever been next to and let alone you know been fortunate enough to blessed enough to kill it but uh it was it was a very cool buck so and this one is tb2 this is a deer i probably hunted harder than any deer that i have in my house um this deer was i found his sheds at four and they were like 160 inches so i thought wow this is this deer is going to be a, my first true booner like i mean it's going to be 170 inches for sure and the following year his tips didn't finish growing because it was a drought year. I mean, real bad drought. And he only grew to like 150 inches or so, 145, 150 inches. So he actually lost like about 12, 13 inches of antler from four to five, which is unheard of. But drought conditions, a lot of deer were dying from EHD uh, that year. And so that was kind of, you know, the attributing factor to that. Well, the next year, and I actually... <laughs> I actually shot him and hit him high in the shoulder that year in November. And he ended up living, saw him again late season. And then the end uh, or the beginning of the next year, of course, I was all in on that deer. And I had him coming up this draw, knew right where he was bed, and he was coming up in this draw, uh, going right past one of our mineral lakes and heading out into this clover to feed. And I set up on that deer like 14 times before I ended up killing him and that draw and I moved stand locations three different times for the win to try to you know hit him and I'd have him going by the camp if I was there in the morning he'd come by that afternoon if I was there in the afternoon he'd come by that you know the morning before or that morning that next morning it was just it was total cat and mouse game but finally finally caught up with him and yeah that was a pretty not a not my giant biggest scoring deer I think he was you know probably one upper 150s but just one of those deer that you, was just really, I dreamed about killing it and it finally worked out. So, but yeah, I, uh, I love to hunt, love to deer hunt. And I've got, uh, actually got another big one that I hope to be adding to the wall here soon that I've been out and filmed already this year. So.